In 1892, at the age of 35, Moses H. Cohn, a second-generation German-Jewish immigrant and wealthy industrialist, began purchasing land from local families around Blowing Rock. He acquired land totaling around 3,600 acres that included farms, pastures, and forests. Born in Jonesboro, Tennessee, Moses likely became aware of Blowing Rock during his years traveling as a salesman for the family's wholesale business. It was during these post-Civil War years that Blowing Rock became known as a summer retreat for wealthy visitors, lured to the mountains for the natural beauty, the cool summer temperatures, and the healthy atmosphere. In 1899, Moses and his wife, Bertha Lindau Cohn, broke ground on their three-story, 14,000-square-foot manor house. The Cones hired Arlo Epps, a Greensboro architect, who designed the home inspired by the Beaux art style, which the Cones saw at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. Shipping the building supplies as well as the construction itself was difficult. Wagons led by teams of oxen haul lumber and other supplies up the mountain, while professional tradesmen had to be recruited and relocated to the area. By 1901, their 25-room mansion was complete. The home became known as Flat Top Manor, named for the mountainside location of the stately new house. For nearly half a century, Flat Top Manor served as the summer residence for the Cones, their families, and many family friends. Through the decades, the estate would operate a profitable orchard of 30,000 apple trees, connected by 26 miles of carefully landscaped carriage roads. The estate would also support a stock farm, two lakes, a dairy, deer parks, and vegetable gardens. Blowing Rock people will always remember the night the lights were turned on at Moses Cones. The house is second only to Vanderbilt's palace at Biltmore, and the effect of the illumination on the snow-clad surroundings was something really grand. The electric light plant is modern in all respects. It is doubtful if there is a finer private plant in the country. Gas lighting, hot and cold running water, provided the cones with creature comforts never before seen on the mountain. While Moses worked on cultivating the estate's land, Bertha Cone focused on the house. She made all the arrangements for the home's furnishings and coordinated the estate's dining schedule. Though Moses and Bertha envisioned spending many summers together at Flat Top Manor, that dream was cut short. On December the 8th, 1908, after becoming ill earlier that summer, Moses died of heart failure. He was 51 years old. Because her husband did not leave a will, Bertha's most immediate business was negotiating the details of his estate with the Cone family. She gave up her share of the Cone textile mills and kept Moses' real and personal property, namely Flat Top Estate. For over 37 years, Bertha skillfully managed the affairs of the estate, spending most of her summers in Blowing Rock and winters in Baltimore. In the first decade after Moses' death, Bertha extended the kitchen, added the heart-shaped ponds near Bass Lake, and in 1913, she opened Flat Top Dairy, Watauga County's first grade A dairy. In the two summers following Moses' death, his sister Etta joined Bertha at Flat Top Manor. Both women grieved the loss of Moses and took comfort in walking the estate roads and seeing through some of the projects he had started. At Sandy Flats, Etta taught school to the estate employees' children and took joy in providing that service. It is wonderfully beautiful up here, and it is remarkable to see how well Sister Bertha manages this place in every detail. She has wonderful executive ability, and the men respect her immensely and do her bidding. The Lindau family, including Bertha's sister, Sophie and Clementine, and their nephew, Norman, joined Bertha for many summers at Flat Top. Other guests would visit throughout the years, including Gertrude Weil, 
later known for her social activism as a suffragette. She stayed at Flat Top in 1912 while visiting Appalachian Teachers College in Boone. We take walks twice daily, the principal object being to exercise the dog. The house has beautiful things in it. Anyway, a lot of old colonial furniture and a great many foreign jars, bowls, and vases, especially from Japan. Mrs. Cohn is an immaculate housekeeper, very particular about every crumb of mud that's brought in. So I'm kept in a constant state of fear lest I leave something around where it ought not to be. Bertha was formidable in some aspects of how she managed the affairs of the estate. She was fondly remembered as a wonderful conversationist and a woman who wore black, fashionable hats with black widow's veil hanging down the back. Norman would eventually marry and have children of his own. Judith and Nancy, the grand nieces of the Lindau sisters, spent many summers at Flat Top with their aunts. Nancy and Judith enjoyed a variety of activities at Flat Top Manor, including picnics, horseback riding from Lloyd Tate's Clark Street stables, and reading or writing. On occasion, Bertha Cohn would take her great nieces for a horse and buggy ride down to the big lake, sometimes inviting children of the estate's employees to ride with them. The meals at Flat Top Manor was some of the grand niece's most vivid memories. Bertha coordinated all activities with her cook, Mrs. Helen Bumpus, who was the wife of their chauffeur, Ed. The Manor House staff were all African American. They lived in servants' quarters behind the house and primarily traveled with Bertha Cohn from Baltimore. After dinner, a midday meal, the family would go upstairs to relax in the living hall to share stories, read or write letters, and play games. When purchasing local farms, Moses offered families the opportunity to stay on as the state's workers. Each family working on the estate received pasturage for one cow, a pig, a half-acre garden plot, and a modest hourly wage for their labor. Estate workers lived in two-room wooden houses nestled in inconspicuous locations around the estate so as not to disturb the Cone's view from the manor house. For workers, life on the estate was dominated primarily by work responsibilities, working 10 hours a day, five and a half days a week. Men usually held permanent jobs on the estate while women carried out the household chores and raised the children. Workers maintained the carriage roads, harvested apples, mowed grass, and tended the gardens. In winter, they cut wood and harvested ice from Bass Lake for dairy and manor house use. The estate was all kept beautifully manicured. All the leaves were taken out of the ditches, the grass was kept mowed, the trees were properly trimmed, and the fences were kept in perfect repair. You couldn't believe how pretty it was. During apple harvest, it took every man, woman, and child to help pick apples. Kona State apples were shipped to customers throughout the South and showcased in many state fairs. In the late 1930s, Bertha learned that the National Park Service and the state of North Carolina planned to route the Blue Ridge Parkway through her flat top estate. She strongly opposed the plan. She lobbied with politicians, including President Roosevelt, to air her objections. I hope that this lovely estate will be left intact during my lifetime. A fortune has been spent to make a charming place of what was wild mountain country. I would never consent to the road going through this place. I am 81 years old and feel that I want my home place not to be disturbed while I live. She would ultimately get her wish an agreement was reached that the road would not be built through her estate until after her death. In a letter to Moses' nephew, Bernard, Bertha discussed her ideas about how the manor should be used following her death. I live now as simply as possible, but have to pay tax on these many acres, which I will do while I live. 
The place seems to grow lovelier every year, and I receive letters of appreciation from people who ride and walk through, and wonder and hope that the men of the Cone family will see that it is kept and looked after as the Moses H. Cone Park. In October 1945, with the recent death of her sister Clementine, Bertha, at age 87, wanted to ensure her own affairs were in order. She signed a 12-page will designating to whom her belongings should be given. On the morning of June 8, 1947, Bertha Cohn passed away in her bedroom at Flattop Manor. As she requested, her grave lies next to her husband, about a mile from the manor house on the flanks of Flattop Mountain. Upon Bertha's death, the estate was left to the Moses H. Cone Hospital in Greensboro. But the trustees concluded it would not be in their best interest to own and operate a public park. It was obvious that such a park would drain hospital resources. In 1949, the hospital trustees gave the estate to the United States of America to become part of the national park system. Moses Cone had been a proponent of the establishment of public, federally controlled forest reserves in western North Carolina. If it were necessary to do so, and by doing I could certainly secure this great and beneficent enterprise, I would not hesitate one minute about deeding my whole estate to the government without one dollar pay for it. The happiness I would have from having been the means of bringing the great blessing to the future citizen of this whole region would compensate me for my great sacrifice. In many ways, Moses Cone's vision of forest preservation came true. Today, Moses and Bertha Cone's Flat Top Manor is a National Park Service historic site. The Moses H. Cone Memorial Park receives about a quarter million visitors a year who come to enjoy the rolling hills, splendid views, carriage roads, and history of this extraordinary couple whose legacy is protected and preserved by the National Park Service as the pleasure ground for the public that Moses and Bertha envisioned over a century ago.